Absolutely. So this system especially shines with a uh, high mix, low volume type of setup. So we've got a small pallet. It doesn't take a ton of parts, but what it does gain you is unattended runtime. So you've got a small job that you need to run a batch of 50 of them. You don't have a guy to run those or you want to run them through the weekend. You set up your robot, you get it up and running in an hour, and then it's running and making parts for you. And it do doesn't matter how many parts you're throwing on there as long as it's making parts, right? Hello, my friends. Welcome back to MTD CNC. We always appreciate you showing up to learn with myself because I always bring the experts with me. I got my buddy Tom with me today. And something that we're hearing echoed and rippled throughout the industry, it's redundant, but it's important and it's important to talk about as well is automation. I mean, how many videos have you seen where I'm standing with the Fanic guys, with the Methods guys, and we're talking about automation, automation, automation. This is how we reshore. This is how we bring things back. This is how we create profitability in an industry that needs to get more productivity. This is how we create that productivity. I mean, these, it's almost like tongue twisters what I'm saying right now, but it's all important to understand. And what we're gonna focus on today with Tom is how easy it is to adapt to, flexibility, ease of use, all of that all inclusive. And then I'm gonna show you a little bit about what we're making on this robo drill today because it is beautiful. Tom, let's talk about the adaptation of adding a cobot to a machine, a robot to a situation, and how we can build that confidence for the people who are just starting to get into automation, although there's been a boom over the last couple of years. There's still people that are hesitant. So let's speak to those people right now. All right, so Tony, this right here is our Job Shop Cell Collaborative. Um, this system was specifically designed to be easy to implement, easy to program, easy to set up, with little to no robot experience whatsoever. The system was designed for the people that are a little bit afraid of automation. They don't really want to get those really high price, high ticket items that they're not really sure they're going to be able to utilize. This one comes in at a relatively low price point. It's much easier to set it up in front of a machine and get yourself running right off the bat. We do offer a package to give you a little bit of training if you need it, but we've got customers that had no robot experience take this thing and run with it with the manual. They were up and running in a few hours on their own no help from us so you know every time i hear something like that tom the audience i'm sure kind of does the same as me is like you have to be exaggerating right if i'm brand new to this could i really run it within a couple of hours now personally i know that answer is yes because i've done enough videos at this point but let's convey the simplicity of that adaptation just a little more in depth how is it so simple these days because it didn't used to be that way but we needed to adapt to an industry that wanted this technology right away and needed the simplicity and adaptation right yeah so fanic especially has done a lot of work with the crx to make it more approachable more easy to use for a new user and methods we took that one step further developing this system where we took all of the the hard work out of it all of the uh teaching how to how, how to make the part flow from one position into the machine, handling all that interface between the two, handling basically everything that needs to be handled in terms of the, the hard stuff. And we've reduced it down to a level where all you have to do as a user is push the button, basically. It's just all teaching based. Um, there's a, a dozen points to teach in the system. It's a single ethernet connection to the machine, simple startup, really easy to use, really easy to approach. And I'm looking at it now, it almost looks like I'm playing with my smartphone. And we're all adapted to that at this point. We're on our phones all day. In fact, in the US, it's an average of about two and a half hours per day per human. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So now we know that it's pretty easy to implement. Something else I want to convey to the audience is that this can be done on an existing machine. You don't have to buy a whole new setup in order to make it work. You can adapt this part of the plug, it, plug and play into a machine that's maybe been in the facility for five years or so, right? If we're trying to adapt into automation, that's part of that convenient adaptation is being able to do that. Absolutely, so this system is plug and play ready for any robo drill that has an embedded port on it. So that's DIA, DIB, and DIB plus control robo drills. So if you've got a robo drill that you've had since you know, 2017, 2019, it's just sitting there, you need, you need a robot to get in there when your operator's not available. This is plug and play, you'll have it up and running in minutes. Something else I want to convey because although we're starting to understand more and those who watched our MTD videos, especially with the methods guys, we understand what we're about to talk about, but I want to talk about it anyway. And that's the misconception that it has to be when we think of robots and cobots, I need to have large batch sizes. That's not the case. We can have a high mix, low volume at this point as well. And we can still get that ROI that you talked about in the beginning of this conversation pretty quickly. It's not about 
got to have a thousand, got to have 10,000. I can have five, 10, 15, 20 and run those parts just like that, right? Absolutely. So this system especially shines with a uh, high mix, low volume type of setup. So we've got a small pallet. It doesn't take a ton of parts, but what it does gain you is unattended runtime. So you've got a small job that you need to run a batch of 50 of them. You don't have a guy to run those or you want to run them through the weekend. You set up your robot, you get it up and running in an hour and then it's running and making parts for you. And it do doesn't matter how many parts you're throwing on there as long as it's making parts, right? So that's exactly right. So now that we've sold about a thousand of these to the audience that's watching right now, let's talk about what we're making at this moment here in Arizona. I'm gonna show this to you guys real quick. Look how beautiful and shiny that is. Now, a lot of people think that only the most expensive machines on the planet can create that mirror finish, but you're creating a mirror right here, right now. And this is a cost effective setup with the automation here on a robo drill. Yeah, absolutely. This is a very impressive part. This one catches a lot of eyes. Um, this part, it's it's an aluminum part. It's just straight up off the robo drill, no polishing whatsoever, just three axis tool paths, um, no crazy finish uh, surfacing or any special finishing tools or anything like that. It's, it's what you get out of a robo drill. They're, they're impressive machines for what they are. And I think that's pretty much the summary, right? They're impressive machines is exactly right. And I think it's important for me just to reiterate what Tom was saying, that there's no additional manufacturing, no polishing that went into this. There's no special tooling that went into this. This shine can be created on your robo drill as well, or the robo drill that you plan to invest in in the near future with this automation setup, Tom. Thank you so much for your time. First time on camera, did he nail it? Leave it in the comments. We wanna hear from you as well, Tom. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, Tony, it was great to have me.